thank you, Gupta sir uh, and the team for uh, inviting me to be a part of this uh, uh, symposium. I'll be switching off my video just not to interfere with my uh, the the uh, audio. Um, So, uh, uh, so this talk of genetics of Kakut was given by Professor Francisco Emma from Bambino Gesù, and I have a privilege of knowing him personally very well, and also I have spent some couple of weeks in his uh, uh, in his hospital a year a year back, uh, much before the Corona hit the that country first. Uh, when we talk of genetics, I mean we can we especially in the field of nephrology we think of silver resistant uh, nephrotic syndrome. Is one of the most common uh, etiology where we do a lot of genetic uh, workup, and then comes the tumor disorders and then uh, the celio, uh, celiopathies. Kakut is never seen uh, uh, very up in the list, and over the next uh, 12 min uh, 12 15 minutes, I will be going through the uh, the review and which will give an understanding of the utility and the current status as well as the challenges of using genetic testing in children with uh, penetral anomalies of kidney and urinary tract. And I've divided this talk into two halves. The first half, I'll be talking about the clinical aspect and some a bit of embryology because it's important to know that in the context of uh, genetic testing and thereafter going into the core genetics and the how, how we could use it in the current setting and the challenges. Um, so when we learn, so this CACUT is a term that has been used for the last uh, decade or so, which is an umbrella, uh, umbrella uh, term for a spectrum of uh, renal anom uh, anomalies, uh, not only the kidneys, but also the urinary tract. And they're usually the structural, but, and many of them are functionally normal, but, if, but in a subset, it could be functionally abnormal. And they represent one of the most common congenital malformation detected by uh, fetal ultrasound, and, and with an estimate ranging from anywhere between three and six for a, for every hundred thousand uh, birth. The the kind of uh, the anomalies that are seen uh, varies very much, and not only are they seen as an isolated, but also in presence of other extrarenal uh, malformations. So when we look at the phenotypic uh, spectrum of the real, uh, it's really uh, diverse. But broadly, we could um, broadly, uh, you know, uh, classify into three groups. One is the you know, basically the reflex or reflex nephropathy, where that may be associated. Uh, um, you know, um, uh, dysplasias. And the third group is the obstructive uropathy, and most common representative example is posterior urethral uh, valve. So, as you can see, it is very uh, uh, diverse. And fortunately, most of the anomalies that are detected antenatally are transient or, physiologic, or physiological. But yet, we need to worry about the spectrum of uh, anomalies in children, and I'll come to that in the uh, later slides. So, as I said, I mean, we just need, when we talk of CACUT, uh, we need to look beyond the kidneys, as shown in this uh, cohort study of 100 children, where they noted that nearly one third of them had extra renal anomalies, mostly involving the cardiac, the hearing, and the uh, uh, amount of diabetes mellitus, especially those with HNF beta mutations ocular and ear anomalies. So it's very important that when we have a child with CACUT, we look for these extra renal anomalies. And vice versa, when we have a syndromic child, we need to look at the kidneys by performing an ultrasound. So these are some of the examples, like this was a child who presented to us with renal failure, but obviously on examination was obese, uh, had short stature, had, uh, had poly uh, uh, polydactyly, so was a, a child of barden beadle syndrome. And similarly, when you have a child with with a renal dysplasia, you should do a careful eye, ear, uh, eye examination, like as this in this child, where you can notice a coloboma. So, extra renal um, findings helps us identify a probable genetic etiology of the underlying uh, CACUT. So, why should we bother about uh, CACUT? As you see in the left panel of the uh, uh, slide, from various registries in that represents various populations 
uh, we can see that CACUT constitutes probably 30 to 50, up to 60 percent of causes of CKD or and the most common causes are hyperdysplasia. is what is seen elsewhere. This is the data from our CKD clinic where you can see that renal hyperdysplasia, um, obstructive uh, uropathy form a chunk of those children who present with CKD. While most of the structural malformations can be picked up antenatally, in Indian series from JIPMA, when they analyzed 300 children with CACUT, they noticed, they observed that one in five children are diagnosed postnatally, especially when they present with urinary tract infection, hypertension, or other non specific features of uh, CKD. And CACUT with CKD clearly impacts the quality of life, and many of these children gradually progresses to end stage renal disease, often between 15 and 25 years of. Uh, of age. As you can see, although it constitutes uh, the overall in the, in the European registry, it constitutes only just 2% CACUT for those uh, on dialysis. But you can see that majority of young population who uh, who enter into dialysis have underlying CACUT. So it's clearly suggesting that, that CACUT is associated with significant morbidity and mortality also, which have not shown that they tend to have a lower survival as compared to uh, a glomerular disease. There are many unique aspects which are reflected on the genetic aspects of CACUT. Many of them are unilateral diseases. They can be sporadic as well as familial. And also there is high phenotypic variability between cases even within families. So one child can have reflex where the mother can have cyst in the kidney or the other child can have PUV. Uh, and not only between patients, even within the same individual, there can be co-occurrence of different Please. For example, a child with renal agent CDK can have you a kidney. So clinical phenotypic device dynamic and that that possibly is a, a probably a significant role in deciding the severity of uh, CACUT. And this environmental is well known in uh, Barry Brenner's study of subtle kidney uh, hypoplasias, where now now we know that a large number of causes like prematurity, diabetes, medications, vitamin A deficiency can all lead to subtle uh, dysplasias. But now I'm going to focus solely on the genetics of uh, the CACUT. Before I go into this genetic, it's important to understand through the embryology why the uh, genetics is very complex. There are two key events happening that is from the two key players that is the uretic birth and the metanephric mesenchymal. And the induction of the uretic bulb, the metanephric mason uh, kind, uh, leads to further branching and nephron development, which begins at fourth week. The ureters get canalized around six to eight weeks, and urine formation uh, starts around eighth week of uh, uh, gestational life. And thereafter, there is gradual maturation and formation of more and more nephrons until the 36th week of uh, uh, pregnancy. So as you can see that there's a continuous development of the uh, renal uh, of the genital urinary tract and the timing of insert will de probably uh, determines the kind of uh, anomaly you have. So if you have an insert in the early gestation, it's more likely to be agenesis or severe hypoplasia. And if it is in the later half of gestation, you could have more of the outflow tract abnormality, which coexist with varying degree of kidney hypoplasia and dysplasia. There is more glandularity in the morphogenesis, uh, the molecular players involved in the morphogenesis, basically more uh, in, in the nephron, and as you can see here, the nephron goes through various stages of development starting from the condensation to the vesicle formation to comma shape, S shape and then imagination of the capillaries into the glomerulus and finally forming the mature glomerulus. And there are a lot of transcriptional factors that regulate this development. Similarly, in the uretric bud, there are a lot of molecular players that are involved not only in the recipient of uh, mesenchyme but also in the development of the ureter and the urethral and the uh, urinary bladder. So this complex process requires a very tight regulation of the entire transcription process, which is not only different in different uh, uh, nephron segments and the ureter, but also is very time dependent. So a lot of this uh, phenotypic uh, spectrum that we see is also ba uh, based on which of these 
multiple players are involved, are perturbed, or are affected, or are affected. But what is very not very clearly known is that apart from the glomerular formation, the exact patterning of the remaining uh, segment of the nephron, including the distal connecting tubules and the collecting system, is not very uh, clear. Now, before I go into the genetics, I just want to highlight two uh, terminologies and two techniques. As we all know, the genetic variations most common are small point mutations or insertions and deletions that we commonly see in most of the uh, inherited diseases, including renal diseases. And these could be detected using either the Sanger sequencing or what is now uh, we commonly use the next generation sequencing. But there are other group of variation that are very large. That is, they involve thousands of bases of deletions or duplications. And these are called copy number variations. So there are large structural variations. And these can be only identified if you do a chromosomal microarray. And why I'm saying that uh, this is that a lot of variations, genetic variations that have been identified in CACUT encompasses uh, both these type of variants and hence requires two different type of techniques to detect these mutations. This slide shows a list of uh, genes that have been identified with CACUT. Uh, uh, you know, there are more than 50 genes and what is striking is that the dominant genes are more predominant as compared to the autosomal recessive, which makes a genetic diagnosis using NGS challenging. It's far easier to diagnose a recessive condition using an NGS method as opposed to an autosomal dominant uh, method. The other thing is the most common mutation that have been identified are PAX2, uh, sex genes, and then the TNXD. Uh, by genetic testing, we are trying to pick up which of these genes are mutated in the child with CACUT. So, so to know which are the common genes involved, I mean, I'm giving a summary of various studies that have been done. The number of genes that are causing mutations varies on the cohort that has been studied, the number of genes that has been screened. And these are the common genes that have been identified, as I've said, PAX2, Robo2, HNF, beta 6, and EOI1 are the common genes associated with renal hypoplasia and dysplasia. Very few genes have been associated with ureteral anomalies like Robo2 and UPK3A. Now, these, especially in hypodysplasia, nearly 10 to 14 percent can be explained by mutation in any of these genes, which has also been validated in other large cohorts like the CKIT cohort from US. And also when they screen the severe renal anomalies in fetal or, uh, autopsies that have severe fetal renal anomalies, they found that HNF beta and PAX2 are the most two common uh, mutations that they could identify. So why a single gene uh, um, technique can identify few genes? With the advent of the next generation sequencing, more and more genes are being uh, identified. And this is an example of full exome sequencing done in one of the largest cohort of children with CACUT, 232 families with nearly 500 children. What you can see is that um, around 13 to 14 percent of the children were identified to have mutations uh, in this uh, uh, cohort. That includes 6 percent of children with NS known syndromic CACUT uh, uh, gene. And also, they could identify around 10 patients, 10 percent of the patients having novel multiple candidate genes that needs to be further validated. And this panel on the right side, other uh, groups who do not have history of consanguinity or a severe uh, phenotype. So this is a, clinical information is important to keep in mind while ordering a genetic testing. What about others? This is a data from Irish uh, uh, cohort where they screened for in 18 to 20% of their population of adult onset CKDs with CACUT had some form of a uh, genetic mutation. And you can see again here what was seen in children that if you have a cystic kidney disease, if you are syndromic and if there is an isolated CACUT but with a positive family history, you are more likely to have an uh, identification of a genetic etiology. So this is something which is very uh, genetic testing is something uh, the burden is similar as the seen in uh, children. So we tried to look in our cohort the burden of uh, uh, the uh, prevalence of genetic uh, mutations 
and we screened 69 children with a design with a customized design pattern that we designed in our lab that involved only 31 genes just to save cost as gold with some sequencing was expensive uh, we ran this um, uh, this panel on an iron torrent uh, sequencer and this is the uh, clinical details of the cohort bulk of our patients were with vesicle reflex with or without dysplasia and posterior urethral wall and when we analyzed the 31 genes in these 69 patients we found a large number of variants but based on the character the criteria that are used to identify a pathogenic uh, variant we finally filtered 63 and among them we found only three variants to be likely pathogenic while the rest of it were either variant of unknown significance or likely benign and these three variants two of them were seen in one patient who had PUV in the CHD uh, 1L gene and TNX found to be mutated in a child left duplex ureter suggesting that not only there is a phenotypic heterogeneity but also a genetic heterogeneity in the form that the same gene can lead to different type of phenotypic uh, manifestations apart from single gene mutations what has now been identified are that there is a significant number of CACUT where copy number variations are involved which I have already said that there are large deletions across uh, many uh, uh, genes uh, uh, involving more than 1000 uh, base pairs. This is one of the largest study done in the US which involved close to 3000 patients with CACUT and 21,000 control and you can know that it's a different technique, it's a called a microarray technique and they found that CMBs are seen in 10% of the patients and most commonly they are again with renal hypodysplasia, mostly deletions with reflex there is a high burden of CMV, but there are mostly duplications. And the least number was found in posterior urethral valve and other obstructive uropathy. So again, suggesting that there are genetic, uh, uh, you know, heterogeneity and differences uh, in the uh, in the architecture and the development of the renal tract, and also uh, that different cate uh, categories are genetically distinct. So just to summarize that. Uh, from all the studies, monogenic causes can be seen in around 15% and CMA in 10%, which means that a large number of patients do not have a genetic diagnosis. Again, it requires two different methods to detect these variants. The variants identified have incomplete penetrance and variable explicitity, resulting in a phenotypic heterogeneity that makes counseling very uh, difficult. And the genetic yield is highest if you have if the child has a real hypodysplasia as opposed to a child with PUV. And also what has been noted is that many of the children with CACUT can present with different manifestations like, like pro severe proteinuria which can be mixed steroid resistant or you can have a small contracted kidney which on genetic analysis it turns out to be uh, alport. And what is surprising is that unlike in steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome it seems that the burden of mutation is similar uh, in children and adults. So what does it mean from a clinical pr uh, practical point? or from a clinician's perspective. It means that there are major challenges in the use of genetic testing because of lack of strict genotype-phenotype correlation. Uh, you should order genetic testing in the child with CACUT if we have syndromic features or a family history or history of consanguinity and if they have a severe renal hypodysplasia. And the most clin obvious clinical implication of using a genetic testing is that it allows us to do something called a reverse uh, uh, phenotyping wherein suppose you find a child with a FHNF beta mutation you could look for uric acid level magnesium level you could look for abnormalities in the liver or uh, pancreas similarly with PAX2 you could go back and look into the eyes to find whether the child has coloboma or not and what is also known is that many of the CNVs are also associated with neurodevelopmental delay and other cognitive defects. So these children can have poor scholastic performance or, uh, or, poor, uh, or delayed in very many of the milestones which was initially attributed to severity of the kidney uh, disease. So oh, these data shows that most of uh, the studies show that there are no strict criteria to order genetic testing but however in patients there are criteria that has been developed especially for screening for HNF1 beta as you can see, there are ma major criteria, especially if there are fetal bilateral hypogenic kidneys or cystic kidney disease. And if you have a positive family history and some of our extra renal criteria, then they can have h and beta mutation. So as you can see here, if you have two major criteria along with hypomagnesemia and cyst of unknown origin, 
the odds of finding uh, hnf vein of buta is much higher as opposed to a child who has a unilateral uh, caput or no major or no major renal hypo uh, dysplasia so in summary any child any fetus with a bright hyperecogenic kidneys that are normal in size or any child or an adult who presents with cyst in kidney of unknown origin with a normal kidney size you should think of an uh, possible h1 beta mutations so how do we now improve upon the current uh, what status of genetic testing for that we need detailed clinical phenotyping to better define the genotype phenotype correlations we need to identify other modifiers of the phenotype which could be epigenetic or environmental in nature and one of the main drawback is that we don't have good models to understand the mechanism of many of the genes that have been identified in caput uh, how they develop these malformations so in conclusion caput um, is a frequent human developmental defect the technique to identify genetic causes include ngs method and copy variant analysis through microarray but these genetic data reveals a very complex genetic architecture of caput for which we require large collaborative efforts in order to uh, you know develop accurate genetic testing strategies that can guide uh, clinical decision making thank you for your patient uh, hearing and i'd like to acknowledge my lab uh, team members for the work on next generation sequencing thank you